All right, guys. Um, I just want to make sure everyone can hear me, everyone can see me. Just doing a quick check in. Um, I see with Brooke, we got right, guys. Um, John, and just want to make sure quick, everyone do a quick can pause hear me, here. See me. And we got an echo. So can you all hear me okay? There's John, there's Valerie, Valerian. I'm I'm slaughtering your name, so I apologize. Good afternoon. Then there's Ahmed. It's Brooke. It's Dev. Okay. We got Dave. It's all okay here. So, um, we'll give it a couple more minutes. As you can see, I got my, my new swag on. I got my, my other LPC. I got a white shirt because initially it was black, black polo. Now we got sporting the white polo here. And, and as you know, if you want to start branding, just feel free to and make an order for the order for the shirts. Um, I think we have one person so far. Their orders come in for their shirt. And I'll be sending that out shortly. I think it was from someone from China. I'm going to send that shirt over. He got a maroon um, LPC shirt. Okay, cool. All right. So um, what we're going to do today? We're just going to cover a do a quick market update. I, I guess most of you know what how the market is doing. Um, then we're going to do an ATM update. Um, talk about a client engagement. Well, a couple client engagements, and then the exchange soft launch. Um, we're slowly but surely, guys, moving in a phase where we're, we've built infrastructure over these past few months, and now we're pushing out um, our products and our services, and now we're moving into the phase of, of customer acquisition, determining unit economics for um, acquisition costs, um, what would it take to get um, someone to purchase an ATM, purchase a point-of-sale device, purchase products or the services that we provide on the exchange platform um, and the consultation services. What does that what does that look like? And then we're beginning now to begin our pipeline in um, sourcing and then qualifying and then prospecting out and then uh, making proposals and then getting onboarding uh, customers. So we're slowly but surely we're moving into a position where we're moving from like once say it once again, just development and basic infrastructure build to now where we have some MVPs in place, both on the hardware side with the ATM and point of sale devices, and on the software side um, with the exchange soft launch um, that we have here. So without any further ado, let me just quickly just jump into just the market update. As most of you know, the market is down. Um, it's no surprise for the most part. We just got to con continue to keep pushing and, and drive on our, uh, our timelines. So um, where we are here on LPC, got a market cap basically almost like 1 1.2 million with 3,532 master nodes. And I won't spend too much time just chatting on the market, um, but just we'll dive into, uh, where is this here? Logis as well. Get a quick update there, and then we could just get in, move into some content. I know that's what you guys really want to talk about, like progress. What are we doing on our roadmap? What are we bringing on? Uh, with LGS, we got a market cap almost like half million with 1,500 master nodes that we have in place, 75% um, lockup rate, uh, which is which is pretty good in terms of where we are now. Um, but for the most part. Let's not focus on where the market is at this point. Let's bring value. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the price action that we see, the, the price action will subsequently catch up with the value. And, and that's what I firmly believe in terms of what we're doing. Um, but the market is, it's, it's horrible at this point. And there's nothing else I can say about it. All right. So with where it is in terms of just the market update on the two projects, we'll slowly but surely move into the ATM update. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to see if my computer will quickly get me into uh, where is that? Twitter. There we go. Press enter. Let's see where we are here. Alright, so 
I'm going to move into some just quick tweets now to give us some information that I really wanted to go over. Um, where we are here now, guys, is I, I, I put out the tweet in terms of where we are um, in launching the, the, the Masternode um, ATM, um, the Gladiator. Uh, we talked about it here on the on Twitter. Got some decent reaction out of out of it for the most part. Um, people wanted to know more about the machine. Some individuals wanted to ask more about. Um, in the comment section, they said, "Hey, you know, it's, what we're saying is not necessarily true." But I, we, you know, we got John making a statement there um, in terms of that sovereignty. Yes, building out infrastructure—that's that's what we're doing for the most part. But we did get a, a comment saying, for the most part, that he loves what we're seeing. Um, but at the most part, it's not accurate that we are the first uh, Masternode ATM. Um, but I I came back and I gave a reply. Um, they included Dash as the first Masternode coin on an ATM. It is true that Dash is the first Masternode coin on an ATM, but it's not the first Masternode ATM. What I mean by that, and then I, I, I did clarify that a Masternode ATM is a Masternode that's backed or supported by an ATM itself. So as I stated here, <clears throat> the LPC Masternode is configured to run on the ATM itself and pays the local owner's wallet, the, the owner's local wallet for supporting the LPC chain. Um, so I asked Dash specifically, and I just did a call out, nothing being, not being too arrogant or anything like, like that, just pointing out the fact. I'd say I'd love for Dash to point out a fact, if it is true, that they have a an ATM or they're on an ATM and the ATM is actually supported by a Dash node. Um, didn't get any reply from Dash um, as ex likely expected. Um, another project referring to them, they probably don't see us as, as being any worthy of reply. But it's a fact. Un until anybody presents evidence to the contrary, we are the first and only masternode ATM where it's a, an ATM backed by a masternode. So the coin logis, coin logic, excuse me, and light pay coin masternode, we've partnered to create this ATM with the features mentioned earlier. It's an LPC masternode for instant and private transactions. You can buy, sell, swap, LPC, Dash, Ethereum, Binance, Litepay coin, um, Bitcoin. It has a debit and credit card reader. So this is in the future, say in the United States, if we at some point get a partnership with a bank um, and they want to integrate some of their debit and credit card functionality into the ATM, that functionality is already built. So it's just a plug and play. Um, there's the ad screen for advertising and then the KYC AML docs and fingerprint readers. So what I mentioned um, by the uh, KYC AML docs and fingerprint reader, this will be something that is controlled by the individual ATM owner. If for some reason a, a consumer is purchasing either very large amounts of, of a currency that's on the machine, the LBC, Dash, Ethereum, Binance Coin, Litecoin, and and BTC. If there there's some suspicious activity um, in terms of the transaction histories that are taking place, then the ATM owner has a responsibility, and and they can check and require some KYC AML docs. They don't necessarily um, are going to the point where they're meeting a person um, like face to face and say, "Hey, give me your information. Let me talk to you on the, the telephone." There's a, a scanner and a reader where an individual can submit um, some identifying information if it is in fact the case that the ATM owners, and, and I, there's some guidance around that, is detecting some type of, say, suspicious activity. But that's something that's on the responsibility of the ATM owner for doing KYC AML. They don't have to do it to everyone because it's, it's the case, it's, it's a machine, it shouldn't be that, that um 
arduous of a task. Every single person who comes onto the platform, you have to do KYC and AML, but it's only the, the case where you're just, just detecting some suspicious activity. And that's the policy of a lot of the um, a lot of the exchanges. Well, and there's some decentralized exchanges, like with centralized exchanges, some they'll let you just sign on and you can just conduct transactions without going through KYC. But then at a certain point, once you cross a certain threshold, say you want to do say three to four BTC in transactions or even 50 BTC in transactions, you have to go through KYC ML. And I think that that makes sense here as well. Decentralized exchanges, um, for instance, um, like Changely, uh, they go through KY, members are submitted through KYC AML if it's the case that they detect some of that very suspicious um, activity, say very large transaction volumes in short periods of time um, and address tracking if, if Say, for instance, they're using a, a, a non-fungible coin and they're, there's evidence brought by an external agency and say, hey, we, we think something's happening and then we should go through KYC AML, um, KYC AML for that individual. And then there's also video support. So I think, and this is my opinion, and I'm just stating this, doesn't necessarily have to be for the record or anything like that, but I'm, I'm just putting it out there. I do believe that the... The, the Masternode ATM is the killer app for 2019. So we're going to be pushing a lot of things forward to, to bring that to fruition. Um, a lot of marketing, a lot of sales. And, and now that I say that, if you hadn't had the chance now, go ahead and um, like, subscribe to our channel. Um, even though we have 3,500 master nodes, about 13, 14,000 people in Discord, 4,000 or so on, on Twitter. We have followers on various channels, but it's the case we, we need to build up our our presence on YouTube. I do think um, that this should be a great channel for us to begin to market what we're doing in the space. Um, so when you get a chance, just hit up the, the like button, hit the subscribe, tick the little bell, and then we'll go ahead and continue to, to give you guys update on a regular basis. So with that said, on the uh, the ATM, I did do some a little bit of work, and we we started out our channel. Give me a quick second. Started our channel on Steemit. So started a nice little blog, and we we started posting some videos. We're going to start putting a lot more videos as well on um, on DTube. But it's primarily run through this, the Steam and app, so you can log in too. So what I did this earlier this week, well, late last week, was that I put out an article because a lot of people have been asking, well, what are you guys doing? How are you progressing? I don't know what um, really Exchange is, even though I've been mentioning it a lot in um, our um, conversations, our um, videos. But I, I took the time to write an article about what is exchange is the managing entity of light pay coin and logis coin it's the legal entity as well um, here in the united states so um, like applying to some exchanges there needs to be an a company that's incorporated um, within the u.s that can um, submit information either on the on two exchanges or in order to, to conduct transactions um, say at a financial institution not saying that we want to to be integrated into financial institutions um, but it's the case we, we need to have some legal entity so I wrote this article to talk about what is the what is exchange what do we do who are the, the founders in the organization what are we who are we, with whom are we affiliated you know, for instance as I mentioned before we're affiliated with the, the, the government blockchain association with professional members um, which is encouraging um, Blockchain usage in government. Talk about what we've done on the R&D front um, in education with um, UCF and beginning to make some partnerships with some other schools. I'll mention that um, a little bit later as things are locked in. And then on the commercialization front, what, what have we done with um, our network um, and some of the partners that we have in place too. Let me take a quick pause and see if there are questions. Uh, I suggested before a donation address for marketing purpose. I'm ready for 50 LPC, for example. A banner in CMC costs minimum $5,000. Yeah, um, I, I'd love for us to, 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 to be able to, to do some um, 
member driven marketing and like I said this is a decentralized organization and you don't necessarily need permission from me in order to engage in some marketing yourself I got a um, now that you mentioned that um, Ahmed I got a note on to note on the discord channel by a member saying hey guys you're marketing you're not doing anything on Facebook you're not advertising on Facebook you're not advertising on Google you're not doing any of that advertising you're not building a, a pipeline um, or a solid web presence to to have a pipeline where you can encourage um, people to know or build awareness around our brand and then I mentioned to him um, the him or her it was a, I couldn't necessarily tell if it was a, a man or a woman but um, what I did mention is that Facebook doesn't allow you to advertise um, on their site uh, it's the case on Google. They only allow registered exchanges to advertise. So that was that. Those are two hurdles for us. One of the largest social media social media platforms on the planet. They don't they don't allow paid advertising from cryptocurrency companies. And the largest search engine in the world, Google. They don't allow um, projects like ours. No, we're not a registered exchange, so we can't advertise any. We can't advertise any of the products or services that we provide um, yet. So um, that's what I did explain, but I, I mentioned that we're beginning to move into some areas where we build out our social presence on YouTube, on DTube from a video perspective, um, on Instagram, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. We want to target businesses, so that's why we're on LinkedIn. So. Um, we want to target some consumers as well for, for instance, placing some important documents that they have on a particular blockchain through the exchange app. So that's some of the things that um, some of the things that I'm going ahead to to push forward on from a branding and marketing perspective. So if you get the chance, share the video, share some of the, the, the articles that we've done, like this one here. Um, this is a pretty good article, which gives a summary of the um, summary of what we've done um, in this space. Um, here is, once again, the advertiser for the Gladiator, which you, once again, guys, you can order the Gladiator. You can or make your order now, 30 to 45 days out. Say in February, that's when these gladiators will be available. So it's the point where you can make the order now and then it will become available um, in the next 30 to 45 days um, shipping to your particular location. So and as we mentioned um, in, in the article here, we talk about how we're attempting to um, disrupt international remittance with the ATM machine. And I think this is a, a a decent example to go through. Uh, I talked about an example of Western Union, um, and I think they were even targeted in one of the advertisements. So, with the his example for one hundred dollars, sending one hundred dollars from the United States to Nigeria costs um, about five percent. You know, if you're sending much larger amounts, you know, then the percentages are going to go up. Um, accordingly, but I chose a, a very a practical example. Now, these are the numbers that I actually got from uh, Western Union wanting to send a hundred dollars. So it's the case sending a hundred dollars um, from Niger from the U.S. to Nigeria is going to cost you about five dollars. So sending one hundred dollars in LPC from the U.S. to Nigeria costs approximately three one thousandths of a penny to make that transaction. But then to be able to cash that transaction to convert that. U.S. currency LPC into that Naira, Naira, which is almost 350,000 Naira at one of the Coin Logis ATMs. It's several percentages, several times lower than the cost of what it would take for Western Union. I think this is a great example of how one can immediately have LPC sent from the United States to Nigeria. Someone goes to an ATM and then is able to cash out less than that five percent cost of what it would take for. Um, that that five percent cost or five dollars for the one hundred dollar transaction sending it to Nigeria, um, so I, I do think that's a pretty good, um, a a pretty good amount here. Let me let me see if we have 
question, a pretty good example that we have here. Excuse me. This I see a question from Craig Pope. The daily withdrawal limit from an ATM, um, is it a set amount or up to the machine owner um, discretion to set minimum and maximum amounts? Um, so from what I understand now, um, that's that should be up to the discretion of the the ATM owner, but I'm not quite sure. I can follow up, but I had an overview when I was in um, when I was in Medellin, but but that was my understanding. But I could touch base to get confirmation on that, Craig, to on the the, the maximum uh, amounts. So let's see. So there we go. With that said, I, I don't see any other questions. Uh, and with the rollout that happened this weekend of the demo, which I think was a great demo. So if you get the chance, I put the, the links to the demos in the um, the YouTube uh, the YouTube description. So when you get the chance, um, if just watch the videos if you had. Now I'll go through go through and play an example here, and hopefully we get the volume going and you guys can actually hear it. Let me see. Hey guys, Dwayne Golden Jr. here on behalf of Coin Logic, and today we're going to share with you exactly how our Logic Pay platform works. It's really cool for sending cryptocurrency to any other country or place in the world. As you can see, guys, the there's like a point there. So we're, we're there. How this works is instead of using a place like Western Union, if you got a friend that's got cryptocurrency, they can send you crypto to a machine near you. Let's say your friend's in France and you're in, I don't know, USA. Your, your friend in France could send you cryptocurrency, and then you in the U.S., after he sends a crypto to the machine, can go and redeem it really easily using your iPhone or a receipt, just getting a QR code. So Lucas is going to do a demo right now from his computer, and then later on, I'm going to try and redeem it from this ATM here. Cool? So go ahead. Let's check in with Lucas. Yeah, guys. My name is Lucas Velasquez. Uh, we're doing this live demo of Logic Pay. So... Uh, you can just log into your account from anywhere in the world. Uh, you, the only thing you need is to have some crypto and to uh, have connection to the internet. So I'm already logged in. Uh, I'm going to go and click send. And it asks me which cryptocurrency I want to use for this transaction. So my friend Dwayne Jr., he will be able to go and pick up the money without knowing that I'm using crypto or which crypto I'm using. He doesn't know anything. Uh, the only thing he needs is the QR code that I get after sending the crypto. So let me show how, how easy it is. I'm going to use Litecoin. Is the one that I have handy here. Um, I'm gonna select the amount for this test. I'm gonna use ten dollars. Okay. So it gives me a code, uh, which I just have to scan with my phone, and then I need to make sure that I'm sending the exact amount that um, the system is asking for. So I want to go ahead and click send, asking me for a pin. And I sent it, okay? So it says that after I send it, I need to wait 30 seconds before I click on verify, okay? So all I have to do now that I sent the Litecoin is just click on verify. And it gives me this code. And what I do with this QR code is I just send it to my friend so he can go ahead and pick up the money. Get it from the from the machine. He doesn't, again, he doesn't need to know anything about crypto. He only needs to go to any of our machines uh, and pick up the money. So let's see how Junior does on picking up this money. Okay, so Lucas was kind enough to go ahead and send me some money. I'm going to come here to the machine and go through the process. It's really easy. All you do is you come here and you click Logic Pay and agree to the terms and conditions. And it says, scan your redemption QR code. So I'll come up here. I'll scan my QR code. Okay, now I've scanned it. It says, you may now receive 10 US dollars. So I'll go ahead and click the proceed button. And now it's easy as taking out my cash. Now you guys can see the power of this thing. Can you imagine not having to spend so much money to be able to send money from country to country and simply just going to a machine and withdrawing it? Here's my $10. It was that easy. That's how Logic Pay works. We're going to continue improving our platforms and our software. I wish you guys the absolute best. Please continue to follow us on all our social media networks. Thank you on behalf of CoinLogic. Okay, guys, what I wanted to do, I, I wanted to show that quick video just to 
demonstrate a, a couple things, uh, and I, I see that there were a couple questions from Dev and from Joe, and I'll get to those shortly. Um, but I, I did want to emphasize with the the demo of the ATM. It's the case that someone can send LightPay coin to another individual, and they have access to uh, LogiPay. They can send LightPay coin, or they can select to send currency via LightPay coin. Print out a QR code, or send that QR code to another person, and that person doesn't have to know anything about cryptocurrency at all to be able to cash out. So that LightPay coin could be sent that in BTC, any other currencies that are on the ATM can be sent and that person receives a QR code and they can cash out not knowing anything about cryptocurrency at all. I think that's powerful um, and I do believe that's something that is will help to increase mass adoption. So, and I see we, I do have a, we did have a question earlier from um, Dev English about um, can we see information about sending documents via blockchain as in the previous video. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that shortly, De um, Dev, particularly uh, as we discuss the exchange soft launch. That, that's on the, the exchange platform, specifically within the app called Excert where you can insert a document, you can take messages and place them on the LPC chain. And I'll show a, a bit about, a, a little bit on that and update you guys as we go through the, um, the client engagement and the exchange um, soft launch. But that's within the exchange, um, exchange excerpt application. And there, there was another question about the um, can you explain the role of the master nodes will play with the ATMs? And that's from Joe in crypto. Okay, and here's how it works. With the ATM that's in the ATM that's in place, say the Gladiator or one of the traditional models, like the one that we have here in the office. I'm gonna do a quick scan over the one that's here. <clears throat> the master node is the master node runs on the local wallet within the ATM. So for instance, you have the different currencies that are on the wallet that are on the ATM. There's also an LPC wallet. As you know, or some of you may or may not know, the you can run a, a, a master node from the local wallet and you can launch a master node onto any system, albeit a, say you have a Raspberry Pi, another computer in your home. Um, also, you could run it from, say, a, an ATM, which actually has a computer inside of it with hard drive space. So with that, the payments that will be made to the, um, the wallet will load the local wallet of the ATM. So it's the case that the local wallet is serving as a master node protecting the blockchain or serving the role of sending instant transactions and private transactions. Well, in addition to any currencies or any um, coins that are not locked up that sit on that wallet and it's open and has connection to the internet. Now that wallet serves as a proof of stake, um, confirmation proof of stake confirmation node as well as payments are being made to that local wallet. So the answer will it generate additional income for master node owners? Question mark. The answer to that question is yes. So if so, how will master nodes be selected by the ATM? Because it's the case. Due to regulations around us being able to sell master nodes here in the United States, we are encouraging all of the owners of the ATMs to acquire the master nodes themselves. So it's the case that the ATM will run on the the the, the master node will run on the ATM, and the master node will be owned by the specific by the specific ATM owner. So now the ATM owner owns the the ATM, they own the master node, they own all the funds being sent to that master node. 
perhaps it's the case um, as we build out other features and other geographies that don't require us to have that don't require two party um, two party transactions in order to um, facilitate or being within regulatory compliance here in the United States. In other geographies, they may, that may not be the case, and we can allow masternode owners themselves to come on board, to come on board and support an ATM owner if they would like to have masternodes attached to it. But that's functionality that we would need to build in at some point. But it's a, it's a good question that we need to consider. Um, Dave, I hope my daughter don't see that demo. <laughs> Bank of Dad just got easier. Yeah, we're we're targeting a wide variety of different areas. Um, because you know, during as as the rollouts happen, and it will be the case, our organization uh, exchange will be acquiring and deploying nodes or, or ATMs ourselves, backed by the master nodes. We have to do the unit to, to do certain case studies in various areas. Um, there's some work that's been done already by um, the, the team at Coin Logic, but we want to do some in some studies ourselves, placing ATMs in malls, in airports, where you have a lot of foot traffic. Um, not necessarily in say like, a, and not to say that. Uh, Trucking stations are bad places to have ATMs, but that's not necessarily an area where we're going to get, say, for instance, 10 to 15,000 people in the course of two to three hours walking past a particular device. So we'll be targeting, once again, some of these large malls, um, some strip malls, perhaps. But it's, it's a matter of studying the location. Where are people walking? Where are people standing and, and just hanging around? Where do you have captive environments? Uh, what I mean by captive environments, like for instance, you go to uh, a great example is uh, Atlanta Airport. I think one of the largest airports in the country. Um, it has a lot of foot traffic. It has a lot of people just lingering around, waiting for, um, waiting for their flights. At the same time, you have currency exchange happening at the airports. So it would be ideal for me if I could select an ideal location within the airport, put the ATM right next to the currency exchange and next to the highest concentration of stores within that airport. So as people are walking by, they're maybe looking at the ATM, um, they're going to the exchange, moving, going from one country to the next, and they say, oh, okay, I want to switch to crypto because, hey, this country accepts um, cryptocurrency as a part of it, it, like in Japan, they accept cryptocurrency and they consider it as um, legal tender. So that's a, an example of being able to place the ATMs in location and study that traffic, study the transaction volume happening in the various locations and then begin to optimize on that. Let's see. Are they, let, let me go back here looking through this. Can you explain the roles of ATMs can you explain the rules of masternodes will play with ATM? I know you, Joe, you say, please address my question. And I, I think I addressed your question. Can you explain the rules ATMs, the masternodes will play with ATMs? I just explained that, um, saying that the masternodes are attached to the ATM and actually support the blockchain. But it's the case that the wallets, the, the funds for protecting the masternodes pays to the ATM. Will it generate additional income for the masternode owners? I answered that before and I just said, uh, yes, the national owners do. It, it does generate additional income. Um, how will the nationals be selected by the um, selected by ATM? I mentioned that one as well. Whereby, um, whereby the owners of the ATMs will purchase the master nodes. So I think those are the questions that I, I did address. Um, so I don't see any other questions that you have. But I, I think I've addressed those. Um, and if it's the case I didn't answer it, um, and write it again, and write it where it makes I don't where it would make sense to me. I, I, that's how I understood your question. So if the answers are not to your liking, just just let me know. So I'm gonna continue to drive on from this point and move on to the client engagement. So. 
um, and Adams, yeah, and, he, and he's not here. To, he's not here today, probably because um, I was on a client engagement um, yesterday, um, and was unable to do the webinar at the scheduled time because I was actually um, not in place. So on the client engagement this week, um, actually had two um, prospective client engagements. Um, one was with a with an international um, cloud-based software company. Um, and they have moved to some initiatives where they're some of the thought leaders within the organization are now talking about how blockchain can be used within various aspects of organizations. I did reach out um, to um, some of those points of contact within that organization. I gave a, a demonstration or a call and then um, some at that point in time, the, the point of contact said, this is great. I want to pull some more people into the fold. Um, just can you give me a little bit more time uh, to round up some of those um, decision makers? So it was a great first demo that um, we had. And we talked about various things, um, blockchain for payments, um, blockchain for human capital management, um, LPC blockchain for um, training um, and certifications and compliance and also um, blockchain for um, use within, say, medical records. So this large cloud-based software company has a lot of different um, a lot of different clients in this space, and I think it would be a great partnership for us. So that, that one went very well. Um, so it's the, it, we're at the point now where we're moving on to that second phase, getting some more decision makers um, at the table and then talking about the benefits and of light pay coin and loading on and actually the same thing around the same thing around some of the functionality of X functionality of excerpt and expose. Um, it looks like we're still trying to come back on. Yeah, now it looks like we're getting we're getting back, getting some connection back. So I want to take a quick pause. Can you guys hear me? Or can you guys see me? I'm just doing a quick check. If you get if you can type something in the chat, um, just let me know. We should be able to sh you should be able to see the stream, and we get things going back again. Okay. All right, we should have a connection. Um, let me know. Um, can any of you? I'm gonna say hello here. Can you see me in the chat? Let me know if you can hear me. Okay. You should. Okay. All right. So it looks like we, we, we got connected again. I, I'm sorry for the disconnection. So I'm going to move forward on the, the next thing. I was mentioning earlier um, on the client engagement, the one that with the cloud-based software company, that one went well, moving on to the next phase. We also had a um, another client engagement with a, with a university, um, and we gave a presentation. And I'll quickly, if it makes sense, I'll just do a quick walkthrough of what we did with that client. It was a, a client engagement with Lumina. And then we gave like the basic definition of blockchain, talked about the innovations and the process flow of what could be done. And then we say selecting the blockchain. And then we talked about the user interface of excerpt. Um, and then we took up some questions. Um, and I could post these slides if you'd like to take a look at it, but we described what is a blockchain, what are some of the innovations that are taking place in this space with blockchain, using blockchain technology. And I talked about a, a process flow of a student um, registering any asset or transaction, or going through a transaction, either taking a test, completing um, some work assignments, getting a degree or certification. Um, then we talked about different types of chains, open source, proprietary chains, and we also talked a little bit about Light Paycoin being able to 
um, be the uh, blockchain that we use for the educational implementation. We talked about the exchange user interface, like the logon, and then we described, say, the um, logging on to the back end, and then using the application. In this particular case, it's the, if this is going to come up here, there we go, the excerpt um, where you can certify docs. This gets back to Dave, Dave English, I think Dave, uh, Dev. Yeah, it was Dev's question about using excerpt. So being able to certify documents on blockchain, um, it's the case we do have the interface that's here, um, but it's the case, the, the full rollout, going back earlier to the, the soft launch, it's, um, it's going to be pushed back a few days because we still have to do a, a, a few more like tests around security. Don't want to let you onto a platform that's not secure. Um, and then there are a few other things around the Expos API that we're doing, but we're going to we're still looking to do that that push um, Within the next few days or so, but I'll keep you guys updated in terms of where we are with it as well um, But this is where we are with the like, sort of being able to certify documents on chain using the excerpt application Here's the example um, that I think most of you have seen um, before in terms of the um, document that we were able to place on the LPC blockchain and then we just took questions but it was a great it was a great meeting that we had um, with this university if we're able to kick off a pilot um, with the university and then we'll move into not only just certification but also within say the learning say the learning process it's, itself of placing different different aspects of the educational experience on chain it would I think that would totally be a, a great use case for us within the educational realm so what I did want to do I, I wanted to show you guys like what we did show to the prospective client in terms of the engagement within the educational space and this is one of the um, just one of many engagements that we will we are and will be doing in the future with Lumina so let me pause to see if there are any questions. Okay. So it looks like there are no questions here. Didn't get any replies on the whether or not you can hear me or see me, but I do see that we have a, a decent connection. <clears throat> and as I mentioned earlier with the uh, Exchange Soft Launch, we were pushing that back a few days because there's still some tests that we need to, to do with Niraj, which security, some APIs um, exposure um, on the Expose uh, app within the um, Exchange, uh, backside of the Exchange platform. So it's just gonna be a few more days, guys. We're gonna, and, and just know that we're, it's gonna be beta. So don't expect this to be full skill, outright ready to launch. It's gonna be quirky. There may be some bugs that you find, but we have some basic unit tests set up, um, a unit suite that we'll run. Uh, on the different applications to make sure it's it's functional and we we'll also have a, an area where you can send some comments for um, either reporting some some bugs that are in the application so I'm going to take a quick pause to see if there are questions and then we can we can move on if there are any questions uh, let's see Looks like we have we haven't had any other um, comments from there, but let me know if there are any other um, questions or comments and concerns that you have. Um, this webinar looks like I covered all the topics: the market update, the ATM update, um, client engagement, and also the exchange um, soft launch. So, not quite sure if the chat is it's fully functional there. Okay, at this point it looks like there are no questions I see, but if there are, just please um, send me questions uh, either on Discord, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Steemit. Um, I'm, they're on, we're now on Steemit as well. We also have a Reddit channel um, too. 
So I appreciate the call. If you have any other um, concerns, just let me go. Let me know. I appreciate the call, guys. Take care.